NASA is gearing up to send humans back to the moon for the first time in 50 years. The mission will look a lot different than previous Apollo moon landings. And one of the astronauts, Victor Glover, is set to make history. He's hoping his example will help inspire others who look like him to follow in his footsteps. Victor Glover is on a mission to push the bounds of humanity. I'm asked often if I was excited, and it, that's, that's, there are exciting things about this, but this is, is very serious work that requires um, dedication and vigilance. As a naval aviator, he's flown 40 different aircraft, but now he'll be piloting NASA's upcoming Artemis II mission, the first space flight to the moon in more than 50 years with humans on board. People are excited that we're doing this again, and so, for a woman to be on the crew and for a black astronaut to be on the crew because that's what our office looks like uh, to me is, is it is important i think people need to be able to see themselves in the things that they dream about and not just have to try to you know color it in in their mind's eye glover will be one of four astronauts on the flight which is set to lift off next year it's estimated to be a 10-day test of NASA's human deep space exploration capabilities, including the Space Launch System rocket, Exploration Ground Systems, and the Orion spacecraft. What are you doing right now to prepare? Uh, the, the three basic things that we're doing are training. We'll do simulators to do things normally and then contingency and emergency scenarios and just kind of building the larger team. Training is one piece. Testing is another. Our vehicle, this will be the first time humans have flown this spacecraft. And the last thing is engaging with the public and letting them know that we're trying really hard to be good stewards uh, of your things, of your time and your resources and, uh, and, and celebrating the wins. This space flight will be a record-breaking journey, potentially sending humans further away from the Earth than ever before. Victor will also be the first person of color to go beyond low Earth orbit. And he's keenly aware that traveling among the stars hasn't always been an inclusive space. What made you decide you wanted to be a pilot? So I was in college studying engineering. One of my mentors came to work wearing his Navy uniform. That opened up something that I never considered. I never saw myself, but because he looked like me, he was one of the few black faculty members at Cal Poly, Mr. Wallace. And, and Dr. Wallace's, just seeing him in his uniform changed that for me. And so I joined the Navy about two years later. A shuttle launch helped inspire him to become an astronaut. At the time, the stars hadn't exactly aligned for many other black people to pursue similar paths. I can't pay no doctor bills, but white is on the moon. Tell me about the 1970 poem by Gil Scott Heron, Whitey on the Moon. I try to listen to it every Monday as I'm driving into work. <laughs> yep. It's good perspective. And as an ambassador of human spaceflight, I think it's important to understand the people that you're an ambassador to. We have to all work hard to understand America, not just the slice of America that we come from. And that poem to me represents a, a perspective that is not often shared when you hear people talk about Apollo. You hear people say that Apollo saved the 60s, Apollo 8 saved 1968. And there's a lot of truth in that, but there were a lot of people who weren't cheering. We have cleared the tower. They were protesting the Vietnam War and wages and the price of housing and the challenges to get in, in education. And so knowing that that was the America then, we have a duty to know what's America now in its fullness, in its breadth, so that we can be good stewards of the public's time and resources. Now, decades later, Glover recognizes that as a NASA astronaut, it's important to highlight American accomplishments like spaceflight and not shy away from tough conversations. The things that are going on around the country in the wake of George Floyd's murder and Ahmaud Arbery's murder, the, 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 the racial protests and, and the, the cities that were really struggling with getting those things under control after that, uh, it, it's just indicative of people being in a place where they may not feel heard and they may not feel like they're being represented. Many right. black people on this planet are, are ailing, and meanwhile, the investment is going elsewhere. Yes. Do you feel that there's still a division, perhaps, within the races as far as uh, going to space and, and how taxpayer money could be used more wisely, potentially, from, from some critics? You can't always analyze things at a, at a state and a national level. Sometimes you have to go into a community to understand and to be able to truly empathize. But sometimes it's just important to listen. When people say, hey, 
I've got potholes in my neighborhood and I still have to go to the city to get clean drinking water. Marvin Gaye had a song as well that makes me want to holler. It talks about, you know, rocket ships and, and the cost of rocket ships versus what I see out my window. The investment we make in NASA, how between 300 and 700 percent return on every dollar we spend creates three to seven dollars of economic and academic activity. You know, there are a lot of people that think that that poem is anti-NASA, and I go, well, it's probably still important that we understand why it was written. It makes us better ambassadors of aeronautics in space. Glover is just one of the next generation of astronauts changing the face of what it means to be an astronaut. There's no political, economic, demographic division in it. It's something that I think most people can, can universally latch on to and just go, that's amazing. I think that is what unites us and makes human spaceflight a worthwhile endeavor. I have this single, singular focus um, that we can all get around and put all of our resources and expertise together towards to meet this challenge and explore together. You know, the thing about records is that it's not about any one individual's success or contribution even. It's about the fact that it marks a milestone, a state of the art of where we're at and where we're choosing to go. What's the most awe-inspiring aspect of space? Wow. To me, it is the way people react to it. The astronauts inside the spaceship. Four stage engine start. And the people outside. It's a really powerful thing to see human beings leave the planet. You know, I'm wearing an American flag, but when I leave the planet, I represent Earth. You, you represent humanity, and I really take that seriously. We all have a duty to represent humanity. An awe-inspiring mission and man. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.